Hi, we're back, episode four. So this time I'm doing a rework of a painting I started last year. This is the new version, the other one I'll show you in the video and probably at the end of um, this series, it'll probably be three episodes, I'll show you the difference in the drawings and photographs between what I have here and what I did last year. The big difference is the perspective and the drawing weren't right. If you're doing this kind of realistic drawing, you need to start with a good drawing before you do the painting over the top of it. Another thing that's an issue here is that this is sort of a tunnel looking down into this area of the painting right here. And all of this focuses your eye in that direction. It brings it all up this way. And because it's sort of off-center, again, this really does require the way that I'm doing this as a realistic watercolor, it requires that you have a good drawing to start with. There's other techniques that are different. The stuff that you might see Bob Ross do on television is more spontaneous and the perspective um, requires less work to get it right. It's designed like that to make it easy for beginners. There's nothing wrong with that. If you're doing other things, maybe you don't have to worry very much perspective about perspective at all. It really just depends on what you're doing. Perspective is not hard to learn. If you want to learn it, there's videos here on YouTube about perspective, and I'm going to be making something shortly along those lines, showing you how to do one and two point perspective with various landscapes, buildings, and also how to put people in perspective correctly in a, in a painting. But it's really not that difficult to do. So anyways, let's get on with this and I'll show you how it all works. So, welcome back to the show. Well, hello again. I have just started on this. This is actually a redo. I started working on this concept last year but I wasn't happy with the perspective so I started again this is the train station at Vanagerode, Germany with the narrow gauge railroad there And so, yeah, I redrawn it with much better focus on perspective. And we're just getting underway with the basic, basic colors. This is going to be a stone wall here. You can remember, like I've said before, this is going to dry lighter than it looks. little bit and what I'm using here is a mixture of this white knights dark gray and a little bit of a cerulean blue which I think gets the the color about right for these these stones Yeah, that's the first, one of the first things. If the drawing isn't right, the painting ain't going to be right. So get the drawing as well done as you possibly can. And then understand that that's what you're going to be working with, is that drawing. Every, every art book I've ever read that says if you're trying to do this kind of art, you need to focus first and foremost on your drawing skills and I need to get back to that myself I've been extremely weak about that lately really I should be drawing all the time and that's not always easy with a full-time job um there's to a certain extent you can you can sort of let things go over here like here, this flower box that I'm going around, that's going to be brownish. And 
And so this super light gray won't even show through. Me, I'm, I'm sort of a detail-oriented nut. Um, so I'm going to... I'm going to be kind of careful about a lot of these little outlines. And I'm going to try to make it as clear as possible what is gray and what ain't. Now I'm going to get a smaller brush to go in there and do that stuff <clears throat> that isn't there. That's the way I work. You know, other people do things differently. Um, some people have a lot looser style. If that's what you like, then great, go do that. Me, I like it like this. I, I, I like the watercolors from Britain in the 17 and 1800s, and I'm interested in pursuing that kind of painting. So that's what I do. You can paint any way you want. That's one of the beauties of it. It, it, it. There's no rules. If you want to do abstract art, go do abstract art. Once in a while I do abstract art. It's not my number one thing. But it can be fun at times. See, now I found something that's missing here. There needs to be a slight line. It's right about here. And that's the roof line. So yeah, right here, all you're doing, all I'm doing here is putting down a basic wash to get things started. Something to work over. Now I'm getting a little texture. That's true. But I'm not making, I'm not making, this is just texture and, and, and the basic color, that's all. Okay. Now, I'm going to move down to a smaller brush, because it will make life much easier. One of my friends, who's, um, Quite a good artist, amateur artist, and uh, he likes drawing. Asked me about colors and how you get colors to do what you want them to do, as far as gradient and subtlety and shadow and light and that sort of thing. And he works in real bold colors, and it comes out looking sort of comic booky at times. Which I like. I like his work a lot. I've got some of it hanging on my wall. And he'd like to know how to improve that or how to make it more, sometimes a little bit more, a little bit more depth. And I think one of the first things is, in, no matter what medium you're working in, is layering. You want to start with basics and you want to build things up. It's not a question of doing things in one pass. It's a question of, of setting up the, the basic darks and lights and then working into the details. Um, if you look at, at, at older painting techniques, one of the things that you'll see is that most people in the so-called good old days painted with what you might call um, an underpainting, or what is called an underpainting. People still do this today. And they'll paint out the painting basically in a like a brownish, like burnt sienna, and then a light color. You can do it with um, two colors, sort of a warmish brown and a, and a cold gray, to sort of lay in the picture as black and white, and then you paint the colors over it. And that's, when I do oil painting, that is always what I do. 
and it's extremely effective. It allows you to work out all the details in simple black and white before you come to the overcolor and basically get all the, all the perspective worked out and all the details before you do anything with color and all the values. Um, I don't do that quite as much here, although really in some ways what I'm doing right now is a type of underpainting, but it will show through a lot more than an underpainting on an oil painting because that's the way I do my watercolors. And watercolor is, is, is a different medium. It's trickier, it's harder to work with. That's unquestionable. Although I don't think it's really that, well, yeah, it's definitely harder to work with than oil colors. Oil colors is really easy. It, it takes a long time to dry. If you don't like something, you can just wipe it off and start all over again. Oils are easily the easiest medium to start with. Even, even acrylics are harder because they dry pretty fast. And as soon as it's dry, you're stuck with it. Oils take a couple of days before they're dry to the touch, usually. And that means that it, you can paint something, and if you don't like it, you can just take a rag and wipe it off the canvas or wipe it off the board and start all over again. Uh, you can't really do that. That's, that's not really possible with watercolors. When, once you put some water and some pigment on the page, you've made a commitment, and there isn't any going back. But I don't think watercolors are that difficult. And again, it depends on what you're trying to do. Um, it's like I said, I really like these British painters and painters from the 17, 1800s. I like Albert Durer's watercolors, which are incredibly realistic. And I don't think it's really that hard to get that kind of a result. Well, yeah, it's hard to be Albert Durer, obviously. But, I mean, you're not talking, it, it, it's not, it's certainly not impossible. Although, it's like I said, it, you got to have a good underdrawing. you got to have a good drawing before you start, because you can't fix it later. Now here... This is going to be, this part where the tracks are is going to be much, much darker in the end. So I'm putting down a light bit here to just, to sort of bring me in that direction. And I'll build this up. I'll build up a lot of watercolor. You can use a lot of layers in watercolor. It's just every time you put down a layer, you're committed. That isn't always true when you're working with oils. You can take stuff off, remove it, wipe it around. It's one of the reasons why Bob Ross paints in oils is because oils is easy for beginners. And actually, they tell people, if you're starting off painting, oils are the easiest way to paint. And that's true. But you do what you want. I mean, if you're going to learn how to paint watercolor, then get a brush and paint in watercolor. Um, yeah, so I was talking about how to get different values and stuff and how to, to get, how to get things to blend and the like and how to use, use colors so it's more than just bold comic book type color. Um, the first thing is you need to experiment. If you're going to do that kind of thing, you need to get out there and you need to take a couple of pieces of watercolor paper or whatever it is, that, whatever medium it is that you're working with and you need to try layering colors one over the top of the other. You need to blend them and see how that works for you. You need to do all that stuff yourself. Anyways, you got a different technique in the way that you touch the page or the canvas, or whatever it is, the board, whatever it is that you're painting on. You've got um, different colors than other people. 
I mean, sure, you can just go buy a standard set of alizarin crimson and cadmium yellow and uh, ultramarine blue and then mix everything from there. And that's actually a good way to learn it by mixing colors. But then it's more than just mixing them on the, on the palette and then putting them on the page. You should mix them on the palette and on the page. And then you should try painting with them. You, you should lay them down on the canvas or a piece of board or whatever and see what comes oh yeah okay so when I mix this and that then I this is what I get or if I do this and I put this color next to that color this is the outcome that I have. Um, I, I can't really over over emphasize you need to take to do some experimentation and you need to do like testing oh what can I do with this color how does it mix what is it like when it's thin? What is it like when I lay it on real heavy? How does it mix with other colors? You need to go through all of that and take a look at it. And then you can start to decide how you're going to take something that you see and turn it into something on your surface. In my case, Okay, I've been doing this pretty consistently on and off now for 14 years since I came to Europe. And before that, on and off, there were periods where I painted and didn't paint for, for many years back in the United States, back to the age of about 7 years old. So I've got some idea of how things are going to respond when I start laying down stuff on a, on a piece of piece of paper. If you've never done it before, well you need a little bit of practice. And you need to do some testing. Oh, let's see how this brown blends with this this bluish gray color that I put over on the first part. Oh, okay, I see. When I put the brown over the gray, this is what I get. Or when I put the gray over the brown, this is what I get. And it won't be the same. If you can go one direction, it won't be the same in both directions. You can layer the gray over the brown or the brown over the gray, and you'll get different results that way. So I think experimenting is absolutely crucial if you want to see what's going on with stuff. See, this is already starting to look good to me. And see, in the last one, I felt the last version of this. I'll show you the last version later. I think I've got some film of it, but if not, I'll just bring it in and show it to you. And I'll talk about that, too. Um, the drawing just wasn't right. The perspective just wasn't right. And one of my friends said, oh, well, why don't you just do it like that and make that part of your style? And it's like, well, yeah, I could do that, except that that's not my style. I'm not into that. Um, I want the perspective to look like it's correct. And so for me, that just wasn't working, and I had to move on, get a new piece of paper, and start again. And this paper is not cheap, man. This is at least five euros worth of paper here. But I can always paint on the back side of the, the other one that I did, which is exactly what at some point I'll do or I'll use it for practice painting. And lots of things you can do with that. Now here, because this is going to be earth, you can just sort of go a little crazy here. It's not real detail oriented. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> now. Laying some greens here. One thing is when you're painting with watercolors, you're always, and from oils, you're painting from big to small. When you're painting in watercolors, generally you're painting from light to dark. In oils and acrylics, you can paint from dark to light, which is a lot easier. <laughs> if 
That's what makes one of the things that makes watercolors so difficult, or traditionally people say it's so difficult, is that you've got to paint in watercolors from the lights to the darks. Now, once you practice that a little bit and start thinking like that, it's not so difficult. In oils, it's the opposite. You paint down the darks first, and then you paint the light over the top of it. That's great. It's really easy to paint like that. My advice is, though, if you like watercolor, then work with watercolor and just learn how it works. And don't expect that your first watercolor painting is going to be exactly maybe what you want. Maybe it'll take a little time. I don't know. Maybe you'll love it. Maybe not. Personally, my advice is it's probably a good idea not to not to spend a lot of time thinking, overthinking your own work. Yeah, it's good to look at it and say, okay, I could do this better, I could do that better, this could be better, that could be better. That's fine. But as many other artists have pointed out, you'll do something, you'll say, eh, I don't really like that. And somebody else will look at it, and they'll think it's the greatest thing that ever happened. So that's, you know... That's life. And it's really, I mean, in my opinion, now you're painting for yourself. Yes, that's true. But the fact is, the people who are really going to enjoy your paintings aren't just yourself. It's everybody else around you. And if they like it, well, they like it. If they're enjoying it, well, then they're enjoying it. So don't get too terribly wrapped up in how you feel about it. Just keep painting. Do another one. That's something that I would say is really important. Um, you want to get better? Do 100 paintings. Do them as fast as you can do them. You'll get better. Do 200. Really, I should do that. I should paint faster and I should worry less about the detail and just paint. Maybe next time I have a long vacation, I'll do that. So, with the colors, experiment. Take out a piece of paper, experiment on it. I would recommend you get some 140 pound or 90 pound 100% cotton paper. I only recommend painting on 100% cotton. If you're doing watercolor, do 100% cotton or gouache. Get some lightweight paper that isn't too expensive and experiment. A, Ten sheets of that stuff, not very big, probably get for ten euros. And the time you spend experimenting with that will be enormously, enormously valuable. Don't feel you have to paint what's exactly in the photograph or what's exactly what you see. You can modify stuff. It can be a little different. You can reorganize things. That's allowed. In fact, you can do whatever you want. It's like Bob Bross says, it's your painting, man. You don't have to follow any rules. That's not how it works, man. You can reorganize stuff. Um, yeah, it's true that most people that are doing serious art, like sort of like what I'm doing here, they do preliminary drawings to work out the details and the composition. They're going to rearrange things to make it look better. 
or to make the composition better or tell a better story. There's nothing wrong with any of that. Or if you just want to like throw paint on a canvas because that's what makes you happy, hey, you know what? I'm okay with that. It's your painting. I'm not the biggest fan of abstract art, although some of it I really like. But it's your art. Uh, one of the tricks is things should sort of fade off to a bluish gray color in the distance. That gives perspective. Perspective is not just a question of drawing the lines so that they go away from you. Perspective is also has to do with color. And things tend to fade to bluish gray in the distance. You see that in all the uh, serious art paintings you'll see in museums and stuff. Okay, we got a good start on this one now. <coughs> I'm gonna bring in the sky up here. It's gonna be a little bit of cerulean blue. Okay, so we're back. Um, the bad news of the day is I've lost a bunch of video, about an hour's worth of video that I shot regarding this painting and another one. And I can't get it back. I don't know what happened. Something went wrong. Oh well. That's the way it goes sometimes. So anyways, what I was saying about this is that if you look at the old version of this, and I'll put it up in the video, and you look at the new version, this version was done, I'm not sure I talked about this, but we'll talk about it for a minute. This version is done with a parallel bar and triangles and the like. And I've laid out the perspective a lot better. The first version, the perspective is wrong and once that's wrong, unless that's your goal, is to have bad perspective, you can't fix it. So I just decided to go ahead and start over with this one. So I'll show you both. You can just take a look at them. I'm thinking about doing one on perspective, basic perspective drawing, at least two-point perspective, one-point perspective. I don't use three-point perspective very much. It's good for effects, but that's really about it. Two-point perspective is really all you really need for most things. And, uh, yeah, so back to work here. Uh, I'm not sure what to do next. I think I'll put in these roofs. These are some kind of gray tar paper in real life. January 2nd. I went to the store earlier. It was mobbed with people. I have a feeling that the reason that everybody's at the grocery store these days in Germany 
is because you're not really allowed to go anywhere else. So that's the big adventure of the day or the week is to go to the grocery store and buy something. I'm beginning to think there may be a lot of truth to that. Because our grocery stores were never quite this crowded before the way that they are now. I don't know. Weird. They're saying now that we're probably going to be locked down till the end of January. Which is probably pretty realistic. Our coronavirus numbers are definitely getting better here. You can see that. But um, they're, they're not moving a whole lot. They're, they're moving downwards, clear downwards trend, but it's real slow. And me personally... I think a large chunk of this is just simply the fact that the weather is not good. This is the flu season. And, uh... I think people are just getting sick with it because it's, it's around. <coughs> it's all over the place, really. And if you get ex and the stuff lasts a long time on surfaces, and if you get exposed to it, a lot of people are getting sick. A lot of people have gotten sick here in uh, old folks' homes, just like every place else. And a lot of people are getting sick in East Germany. Um, Saxony seems to have a real problem right now. Unfortunately, we're not the United Kingdom. They're in the middle of catastrophe. And it's really a shame, but honestly, you know, you have a lot of people who just won't follow the rules. And, you know, denial of science, denial of reality, that's not freedom. It's not expressing your individuality, it's just telling people you're stupid. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I don't know what to say about it, man. I, I just don't see people taking that stuff as seriously over there as they are here. And they're paying a terrible price for it. And the fact is, there are people, yeah, you're more likely to die from this if you're older, there's no question. And if you're the kind of person that says, well, well, the only people who have to worry about it are old people and sick people, well, then you have a problem. That's, that's really not the way to go through life. If that's your idea of freedom, you really need to work on your idea of what it means to be free. You, you, you've got some very, very messed up ideas, is all I can say. It, it's lack of consideration for others. Forget it. What, your right to run around and do whatever the 
blank you want is more important than the right of other people to remain alive, I'm, I'm sorry, but that is just completely insane. But that, unfortunately, seems to be the world that we live in today. I'm not completely sure how we got to that. Well, I have my ideas about that, but we'll let them be. Now see, now this here, this is going to be more gravel down here at the very base of this thing. And gravelish looking. Yeah, there's a lot of things about this world today I do not understand. When I compare, I got to say, you know, I'm 59 and a half years old. And in the time that I've been on this planet, I had hoped that things were going to get better as I get older. And really, I think they've gotten worse in a lot of ways. And I don't think there's going to be a very good ending from that. I haven't given up hope. I think in the long run, hopefully the human race has got some seriously good possibilities. We've also got some serious problems. And we need serious people to deal with that. And really I think one of the big problems is the lack of leadership. very short-term thinking in our culture worldwide about what's important. Well, we'll see what happens. Alright, we'll let that sit a bit. I need to get my photographic guide and we'll take a break here and see if anything's recording. <laughs> 